one of the things we wanted to discuss today and, and cover is how do you say no, or at least how do you mitigate the risk or begin to make other people aware that you may be taking on too many projects at the same time. So when we're starting to think about mitigating that risk, and we have to say no, or we have to renegotiate, what are some risk factors that might lead you to, to 100% say no, or maybe begin a negotiation process. Don't see anything coming through in chat. I got one, Jesse. Yet don't have the skill set. Project scope change. Oh, that that is, that happens all the time. Ed discrepancy with the budget. Got a lot of changes ahead, and some of those changes we have no control over, right? Sometimes we do within the organization, but when the pandemic happened, we had no control over those things, right? Scope date changes. Objectives were not clear. Sometimes we weren't able to do a, a thorough needs assessment. Yep. All of these things. So what we'll move into next is sharing with you navigating the contract meeting. And this particular format here is from Peter Block and Flawless Consulting. And as we go through this exercise, we're going to ask you to think more about the skills you'll need, skills and competencies you'll need as a consultant to do these things versus really focusing on this process. Because you can find a process you like for that contracting meeting, any resource, your favorite resource uh, that you use. So when you have your initial contracting meeting with your stakeholder, the person who's asked for your help, it can really get the meeting off to the right start to make a personal connection to the, the person you're talking about. And by personal, we don't mean sharing, you know, pictures of family and stuff, but it's a way to acknowledge that the person's asked for your help. They may, might feel kind of anxious about asking for help. And if there's been previous history with the person, you can acknowledge that as well. You're really just trying to add that personal connection there. As you look at this list of skills and competencies, just Jess is going to lead you through annotating which of these do you think you need to use as part of making this personal acknowledgement. All right. So client wants and offers. So oftentimes we can go into this contracting conversation wanting to know what the client wants and we would we will focus on that what are your needs what are you trying to accomplish what business metrics are you trying to achieve etc but it's really also important to understand what they're willing to offer you as well and so you can ask questions like those that are listed on the screen we just covered the client wants and offers are right but in the steps that peter block outlines in his model he talks about the importance of navigating the contracting meeting with the consultant wants and offers Right. So it's important to get out what, what you want and what you identify. And Peter Block makes the point that these this should be put directly into words when you express to the client what you want from them to make this project successful. So the last stage in the contracting meeting is ask for feedback, right? So having a conversation about commitment to the project near the end of the contracting meeting is, is vitally important, right? Because you're faced with control and commitment issues, right? So the client can feel uncomfortable or maybe even coerced by, by the, their manager or their, their management into doing the project, right? So asking questions regarding control and commitment to understand any of the obstacles you may be facing or, or fears from the client is really critical at this, at this juncture. Um, and, and asking for that feedback, right? Asking for that candid conversation uh, and being realistic about the client's commitment so that you don't over invest your time or go into the, the contract without realistic expectations. 